Good evening and welcome to all for United WFC. This is the Ben and Matt Saturday Night Live. Unfortunately, we've had to pre-record again. We've got a busy weekend ahead. Uh, how are we, Matt? Yeah, good, mate. Um, I can finally say now, I've been banging on about it for weeks. I can finally say I've finished school now. I get my lions. I'm all refreshed. A little bit too warm, but you know what? We're not going to moan. It's not often we get 30 degrees in Manchester for a whole week, so... Yeah, all good, pal. Feeling refreshed now. How are you doing anyway? Yeah, yeah. Mate, to be fair, I don't really complain about a mini heat wave too much, but trying to sleep during the day, you know, when you work nights. Yeah. I'm absolutely imagine. not. I've had really little sleep all week, so I'm running on fumes, but, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, I'd, I'd rather it be a nice, nice, nice sunny day instead of uh, the, the torrential pouring down the rain drumming against my window every 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 day like it usually does here in Manchester, but you know. Um but what again what what's Manchester with its brain, eh? Mm-hmm. Anyway, um I'm just gonna get straight into it, Paul. The fixtures were released Friday, because this is going out Saturday, so yesterday uh, the fixtures were released on Friday. Um top tough opening five games there, mate, and um a tough end to the season as well. Uh, if, if we take if we took, put into account that we got Chelsea at the end of the season, the last game of the season, but the first five games of the season, um, if I if I read it out, the three of them in September, two of them in October, so obviously no dates have been confirmed as of yet because obviously Sky and BBC have got to pick out their fixtures for television, um, so bear that in mind that the, that the dates are not confirmed yet, although. You know the the, the order the, the orders of the fiction list is confirmed, so they're in the right order, but it's not on the right dates. If that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. So we've got Reading as the opening game of the season, LSV, Leicester City away at their brand new ground, which uh, Craney knows all about. Then we got Chelsea uh, to round off September, and then October. I would just got two fixtures in October, but we've got Birmingham City, which if Matt's gonna. Uh, is our, it is to be our new manager, as all the reports are led to believe. Um, that's a nice homecoming for him quite early against his former club. Uh, and then, obviously, rounding that October off with the Manchester derby mm-hmm. uh, at home at LSV. So, um, Matt, I've concentrated on the fi- first five fixtures first because, and like, I, like I've said on this video, um, where's... Why is everybody's enthusiasm? Where? Why is nobody up for this? All I've seen is uh, negative tweets going, "Oh, we're lucky if we get five points within the f- in our first five games." Uh, I, I, I'm buzzing. Where's the positivity? I mean, I know. Listen, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough opening group of games. Um, you know, Reading's always been our bogey side. We, we, we know that. Leicester City's new up and up and promoted, but they're going all guns blazing. Um, Chelsea, obviously, Chelsea, we, we know all about Chelsea, don't we? Got to a Champions League final, you know, uh, the strongest team in the league, no doubt. And then, obviously, Birmingham City should be, a, you'd think it'd be a foregone conclusion, that game, but you can never say never. And then rounding off with the Manchester derby, which uh, we know, you know, could go either way, you know, depending on how we set up, how we play. Um are you are you sharing that negativity around the first five fixtures, or are you just buzzing to get into it, pal? No, I um I, I sort of talked about this a bit on Twitter yesterday. I, I, I don't understand why every bit of news comes out. There's just a meltdown. Like everyone gets desperate for news and they all moan, and then when it drops, they moan even more. So I'm like, well, hang on a sec. You you wanted something, you're given something, and you still complain. I just can't understand. I don't know why you know i said this the other day since like the very first lockdown last march twitter's been great for getting to know new people and for really sort of you know building the online sort of mu women fans fan fan base we'll call it um but it's also highlighted how many idiots there are and you know i'm not going to mince my words with that i think there's there's just i I read tweets from the same people every day and i I go through the timelines and there's not one positive tweet and i'm like jesus like just chill out do you know what I mean? If it's not a lineup meltdown, it's a signing meltdown, it's a new contract meltdown, it's a manager name rumour meltdown, it's fixtureless meltdown, it's where's this person, why have they not announced this, why is the grass green? Do you know what I mean? People just need to absolutely just chill out. It's summer, the weather's nice, the football's coming back. 
We've been allowed in games. Just let's let's calm. But I think for me, you know, when I said this Tuesday, you know, everyone was having a meltdown over Skinner. And I'm thinking, well, I'm actually excited. It's the start of a new era. Yes, things aren't great. And we've talked about that. And we've, we've, we've listen, we've all ranted and raved about that. Everybody has. Understandable. But now, you know, we just need to move on. You know, six weeks until the season starts. We've got a new manager coming in place. We believe is Mark Skinner. Um, you know, this this now is the next chapter. And I just, I can't believe people are just chucking a fit. And I'm sure, you know, properly get into all this as the show goes on. But I think, listen, you know, just to answer your question round it up. Yes, I'm excited for the new season. Fixture list is what it is, you know, people are moaning, it's difficult, well, it's tough, you know, we've got to play every team anyway, you know, it doesn't matter what order they come in, it it just is what it is, you know, some months are easier than others, you know, I look at April, Brighton, Villa, West Ham, and don't mean that disrespectfully, but that's, yeah. you know what I mean, so it evens itself out, everyone's got a level playing field starting off, you know, it is what it is, it's just time to crack on, turn up to the games, enjoy it, see your mates again. And let's get, you know, let's get some sort of positive reaction out there rather than all this negative stuff every single day. Because it must be draining for those people. Surely it's got to be ranting and raving every day about things that are, you know, just just getting silly, mate. But, yeah, that's that's my thoughts anyway. The, the, the thing is, mate, uh, I, I totally agree with you about the ranting and raving and the meltdowns and everything. I'm like, listen, you know. Let's give the if it is to be Mark Skinner, let's give the guy a chance. You know, he, he worked wonders for Birmingham in the WSL, as as you pointed out a, a number of tweets. You know, um, you know, with a limited budget, he didn't, he didn't have world class players there, world class ability, world class names throughout his whole squad. He might have one or two that uh, that that are shine for him. You know, um, and it's, it, it may or may not have worked out in America for him, but. The American game is a lot different to the English game. He comes back to England. He's back on home soil. Listen, if it is him, he's managing the biggest football club in the world. Um, and what a challenge that is for him, you know. And as as I said, jokingly, it could be worse. We could still be hanging on the manager. And Phil Neville next week could, could get the sack at, uh, exactly. at uh, thingy, at uh, Miami, whatever it's called, into Miami. Um, you know, because that guy's what won five games in, uh, in 23 matches and three, uh, I think two or three of them with, with the Lionesses if, uh, out of them five games. So, you know, it could be Phil Neville. And then as much as I love Phil Neville, I can understand then people having a massive meltdown. But um, listen, I'm going back to the fixtures anyway, because I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. focus on the negativity too much. Um the open at home game, Reading, you know, I, I, I said it before, it's a bit, they're a bit of a bogey side for us. Mm -hmm. um, and as you said, though, it doesn't matter when we play teams, every team, we've got to play every team twice, you know. It doesn't matter when we play them, we've got to beat, every, we've got to beat the best to be the best, you know, yep. uh, as, as, it, as it is. But uh, for Reading as an opener, um, LSV, September, um, should, should get it. Decent crowd there, mate. You know, not 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 a lot of uh, football has been um, a, a, has been able to watch for the women's side, for, especially Manchester United's point of view. So we're hoping a bumper crowd will turn up like they did mm -hmm. uh, for Reading when when we first got uh, um, when we first uh, sort of reband rebanded, if if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. um, so are, are you looking into the first game of the season and it's Reading? Are, are you confident about that one, mate? Do you know what I am? I think, like you said, Reading have been sort of a, a bogey sign, a bit hit and miss. But I think that the thing is, is that, you know, one, it's at home. And like you say, crowd will be up for it because we've been sort of missing football for, God knows, far too long now. But I think the other thing is, if you look at Reading, and listen, I might, I might, this might come back to haunt me, but if you look at Reading, look how many people they've lost. Look how many experienced players they've lost. Daniel Carter, Angrad James, and Farrell Williams retiring. That's three massive not only personalities in the dressing room, but three experienced players. And yes, they've had a couple more outgoings, you know, a few fringe players, fair enough. But they've lost there, for me, three important players. And I just think, you know, I, I've not really seen if they have brought anybody in or what they've brought in or who. Um, from when I last checked it, there wasn't much happening down there. It just seems that, you know, that there may be... I don't know, behind or maybe lacking something at the minute. But listen, it's early days. Obviously, you know, 
like I said, these words may come back to bite me, but I just think there, you know, people talk about chaotic and meltdown over us. But if I was a Reading fan, you've not replaced three key players there. I'd be a little bit like, oh, what's going on here? So I think, listen, there's, there's, you know, optimism there for me. Um, like I say, at home, I think last time we played them at home in the league and we were watching, we turned them over. We hammered them. So I say hammered them. We played very well anyway and got our win. Um, so... For me, yeah, you know, listen, it'll be start of September. The sun should be shining with any luck. Football will be back. Um, and yeah, you know, it's it's better than going down there and sort of facing them away. But, you know, yeah, quietly confident. Um, I put a tweet out yesterday on the Alpha United Twitter with my starting 11. And I put, you know, does it really look that bad based on sort of signings at the minute? You know, and I put out a, a starting 11. And to be honest, it, it does look OK, a little bit light up top. But listen, you know, there's there's more that should be coming, signing-wise. Obviously, new manager comes in, will also have ideas. Um, so, you know, look, let's see what happens. I, I don't want to, you know, jump on what we talked about a few minutes ago about, you know, jumping on the negatives. Let's find something to look forward to now rather than just finding the worst in everything and everyone. Listen, we all love a good away day as well. And I wanted to specifically bring this one up because I know that you're well connected with Leicester City uh, and Jonathan Morgan I hope he's, his name's Jonathan Morgan isn't yeah, it a gaffer yeah gaffer he's just had a new deal as well with, with Leicester City um that's going to be a tough game Jess Six we've uh, coming up against us as well um th- that, this one worries me more than the Reading game and it worries me more than the Chelsea game because this has got a potential to be an absolute banana skin because the way uh, Leicester City are riding a really high crest wave. And, mm-hmm. I, and I said this when we, we played them in the Cup as well last season. I was like, oh, they, you know, it could be one of those. But they've got, obviously, they've, they've recruited well at the minute. You know, the, the gaffer signed on uh, with a new deal. Um, I just, from, from from your point of view, uh, and you know, this side knowledge of Leicester City, Mm. And they'll be playing a brand new ground as well, which I don't know whether you can divulge at this time. But if I'm not sitting on it because I'll get in trouble, like the exactly, last mate. So, <laughs> but they'll, they'll be playing a new a new ground, but that's yeah. that's to be determined at a later date. Unfortunately, we can't tell you. But um, <laughs> Leicester City, though, pal, are, are, are you like me? Do you think it's as, from a United point of view, this has got all the hallmarks of potential banana skin? Absolutely. Listen, I I said this last year in the Cup and I got absolutely slated. I said, you know, watch out for this player, watch out for that player. This will not be as easy as we think. And everyone was like, oh, yeah, you don't know. I'm like, you know, I covered them last year. I was lucky enough to cover them and saw firsthand not just how well organised they were, how hard they work and how they had this, you know, great team bond and sort of togetherness. And listen, that's only going to carry on this year. You know, I'll, I'll not go too much into it. Um, and sort of, you know, go after a mad Leicester one. But I think, you know, they've signed, like you say, they've got Siggy. We all know what she is capable of. Um, you've got Georgia Brome from Everton, um, you know, centre-half, played WSL. Uh, Gemma Perfield, left-back, played in the USA, played for Liverpool, played in the WSL, played at Bristol. Um, Abby Grant from Birmingham, forward, again, you know, Scottish international. Puts herself about, you know. Um, trying to think who else they've announced. Anyway, I'll leave it there because I've forgotten. But off the top of my head, they've brought in basically four to five quality players um, so far. I'm trying to juggle because in my head, I know who's coming in. And I'm thinking, has it been announced? And <laughs> I'm going to end up tripping myself up here and getting told off. But listen, yeah, so far what's been announced, they've brought in some, you know, some real quality. And there is um, more to come. So, you know, yes, they'll need to gel. But however, I I still don't think that that team will be massively different from the team that faced us. Obviously, they they released, I think it was nine or ten. But to be fair, a lot were fringe players. Um, You know, there was one or two shocks. Obviously, Remy Allen asking to leave was a shock. Um, But apart from that, you know, again, to go there as well, you know, new stadium. It is a nice stadium as well. Um, Decent pitch. It should be good for a a good brand of football from us. Um, But no, listen, it's it's, going to be a tricky one. But, you know... For me, why can't we go there and really give a good count of ourselves? You know, we need to atone for that FA Cup loss. You know, everyone had a meltdown again after that. But it's like, you know, for me, the warning signs were there. I did say, you know, watch out for Natasha Flint. Watch out for Hannah Kane. And funnily enough, those two players scored and ripped us apart. So, but yeah, listen, you know, again, um, tricky away game. I know you mentioned about, you know, potentially 
more worse than Chelsea. But I think f- for me, we just we just need to be on our guard. You know, you, you said the gaffer signed the new deal. They'll be up for it. They're all coming into WSL with no expectations, really. Listen, they're not going to be near the bottom. I can guarantee that, you know, probably probably said, you know, mid-table, sort of 6th, 7th, 8th, maybe, for me. But I think, yeah, a, a, a difficult first away game for me. I don't know if you want to sort of add to that based on what you've seen or what you may know. Well, there is why I say I know people are going to jump on jump on my back and say, "Oh, Chelsea's a harder game." Ben, you're chatting bollocks. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that because um, obviously the, the result that's less in the cup last season tells you all that you need to know, and yeah. it's against those sort of teams that we struggle. We know. I know it's Chelsea. We, we've lost games at Chelsea, but it's it's never been a battering. It's always been a single goal in it. I near think enough. This is it. Yeah, you know, uh, 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 and we've we've never took a pacing from possibly the, the best side in the league. Well, not possibly, it is the best side in the league. We got to a Champions League final last season, um, but Leicester uh, are still. I, I know you see you've got a bit a lot of inside knowledge with Leicester City, but uh, from a, a, a WSL standpoint, from my point of view, it's still a little bit of an unknown. You know, um, listen, I, I know we played them in a cup and the Beatles and. You know, we played them a couple of times, you know, uh, obviously in our first season, the championship, down in the championship. But this is a whole different ball game now. Yeah. It's a whole new enough, a whole new squad. Um, it's a much improved squad. It's a better squad. Uh, but they're going places, as I say, you know, they're invested heavily in their women's side, which is absolutely fantastic to see from Leicester City. So fantastically well run football club, as we know it, from the men's side as well. Um and, and and long may it continue for them. I, I, honestly, mate, I, I think these this this team is going to be the dark horses this season. I think they're going to take a lot of, lot of teams by surprise. And as you said, I don't think they're going to finish down the bottom uh, yeah. in any of the bottom places. I think that good solid mid table finish for me. I think even, even probably even better probably even better than that. You know, I reckon they could break it at the top five. I really can. Fair, yeah, I mean. For for me, they're probably gonna it's gonna be between them and Everton for fifth. Yeah, I, yeah, I that's what I was about went, to say. I, I, yeah, I sort of went a little bit low based on obviously, you know, them. What's the word like needing to gel? I mean, yeah, it was, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't a problem last year, but obviously you've got to get used to it. Obviously, it's a different league to Championship. That'll take him a bit of time. But like you say, you know, fifth, sixth, more than capable. But I think if they sort of come seventh, I don't think they'll be disappointed. But it's like you said, you know, you, you mentioned the Chelsea game. I think Chelsea, we know what we're getting. And when it's the bigger teams, we always raise our game. Whereas, yeah. like you said, you know, the likes of the Reddings and obviously Brighton was slipped up, um, you know, Leicester in the Cup. It's these other teams that where, like you said, you maybe don't know what you're getting that is the potential banana skin. And listen, like I said, you know, obviously we talked about it was different from last time and the FA Cup was different again. This season could be different again. You know, they've got five players in, obviously, four players, <laughs> with some more on the way. I'm going to end up slipping up here, so I'm going to shut up in a minute. You've got players coming in anyway that gives them a different outlet again to this team we faced in the FA Cup. So, yeah, on that note, I'm going to shut up now because something's going Well, I, I, I'll, I'll move on. On that note, I will move on as well, so I don't want you to slip no, get in trouble. But uh, I'll move on to Chelsea. And obviously, this is another big game because... Uh, Lauren James could well end up being there. And it's a third game of the season. Yep. And it's also our last game of the WSL season as well, uh, the way the fixtures have panned out. So um, this is... Well, what can we say about Chelsea that I haven't already said uh, just prior yeah. to, to just prior as, to moving on to them? Um, Champions League finalists, put the best team in the league. Mm-hmm. To get Lauren James, that deal does go through like we're expecting it to. They're strengthened even more. Um, what's your take on that? Do you know what? I think it's good to face them early. And the reason I, I so. say this is because the same as last year when we had them first game, mm. they, they weren't firing on all cylinders. It was a typical start of the season game. Um, and yeah, I just think it's, it's it's a good... I mean, listen, again, this might be like the Reading thing. It might come back to bite me. But listen, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna give an opinion because you've asked. But... Um, you know, I think early on, obviously they they you know they're expected to sign Lauren. They've got um, I think you pronounce it Norwine or Norwin, the defender. She's decent Dutch player, um, and yeah, I just think that you know 
they're probably not going to make too many signings. I don't think they need to because they've got a big enough squad now to compete on all four fronts. But, you know, time off and they are they still, I'm sure they're still in the FA Cup. Which, if they are, means they've got an extra game because I know that's some point in September. So I think that could be potentially because I think between Leicester and the Chelsea game is the two weeks. Now, whether that's internationals, I'm not sure without diving into the calendar. But point being, you know, they'll be sort of starting out you know, last year we got the draw um, at home, good result for us. This year could be completely different. But I think, you know, you just need, every team needs that. You just need a few games out of the way to build that momentum. And the good thing about it being third is that they've only played three, potentially four games, which, OK, might be enough, but you still need, you know, to get everybody firing. Obviously, you know, there might be injuries early on. We don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, another exciting game, you know, second home game of the season. I'm fully expecting that actually to be on TV, you know, whether that ends up a Friday night or a Saturday evening or Sunday, whatever, Sunday evening. Um, who knows? But I think that that'll be on telly in front of the cameras, hopefully, you know, another big crowd and, you know, another exciting game to look forward to. Like I say, you know, for me personally, good time to face them, but... I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. If you're thinking like me, you know, just get it out. Well, to be fair, mate, you've called it absolutely perfect, mate. You know, because obviously we played them first game of the season last season. Mm. And it probably is maybe the best time to play them at the beginning of the season where they're not, fi- as you say, not firing all, on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. Um, but listen, mate, I, I'm, I'm completely with you as well. I, I think Sky had this game all day long. Yeah, uh, have to. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I think they'll, they'll build this one up. They'll build this one up. Uh, to an absolute massive um, crescendo, you know, that they will, they'll absolutely hammer this one, especially if Lauren James signs for them as well. They will absolutely have a field day sky about this. Um, on that, though, if Lauren James does go to Chelsea, do you expect us to get a good reception from LSV, uh, from, the, from the Manchester United fans? I'm sure we will. I don't think there'll be any booing, you know, because she's, she's one of our one of us, really, in a way, you know, yeah. uh, but you know, you know, you know what football fans think, are like sometimes. Yeah. No, do, do you know what I think? I don't. Uh, I, I, what, I'm trying to think of the best way to. Work. I don't like talking about Greenwood, but obviously because she went to City. I mean, listen, she didn't go direct, but it was a no. little bit of a kick in the teeth, and it was only a kick in the teeth because one, it was City, and two, the way she spoke, saying, so, you know, "Oh, you know, best fans in." England, you know, big club, got this, got that. And then all of a sudden, she just changed like a light bulb and it was like, oh, actually, no, City fans are better, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, mate, you just waffle a load of crap. Um, But yeah, sort of comparing to Lauren, I think, okay, she's gone to a rival. She wanted to go. I think some people may be a bit annoyed about the sort of the tweeting about Chelsea and the, the posts and the hyping up. But I think, listen, she is a Chelsea fan. It's not a secret. Her brother plays there as well. The whole family are Chelsea fans. So... It depends on the person. I think, listen, I yes, it was disappointing she's gone. And, you know, I've always rated Lauren one hell of a player, one of my favourite players of the past three years. Um, and a big loss. But I think, listen, I'd, I'd like to think she'd get, you know, a round of applause. I think the way it will go is she'll probably get booed when her name's read out and then clapped onto the field. It's usually how it goes. Rather than outright booed, I'd like to think that, you know, she does deserve that respect. Listen, she's given us three brilliant seasons. So... And I think is she third or maybe second in our all-time top scorers? I think she's second. Second, second, second two yeah. Near, two near LJ Jess. I believe so, it is, you know, mate, yeah. Yeah, so she, she does deserve the, you know, the respect that, you know, she should be entitled to for me. But, yeah, there'll probably be, like I say, there'll probably be a couple of boos just in, in, in banter and, you know, light-hearted and then a cheer. But for, for me, you know, it, it it's one of them. We, we sort of... Not got to think about it too much, I think, as fans and just kind of move on, you know. Like I said, exciting times coming up, you know, new era, new manager, new players. Um, but yeah, you know, if 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 she plays, then fair play. I just hope she doesn't score. <laughs> what I think will happen is um when when her name gets read out, I think everybody will applaud and cheer for her. I think when she gets comes onto the pitch, but does a warm up to applaud, cheer when when uh, uh, when her name's read out again, you know, as they read the teams out, as the uh, as they get ready to kick off, applaud, cheer. But I reckon the first touch, and this is what always happens at Old Trafford when a, a returning <laughs> player comes. The first touch is always, always greeted with a light-hearted boo. Yeah. And when when I say light-hearted boo, I don't mean a vicious boo like you know we absolutely hate her. What yeah. is it? It's, it's, it's a chuckly type of boo. It's, it's um, it's a banter type of a booing, you know. 
Mm. Just that. But I, honestly, I think she'll get an absolute recep uh, great reception. Um, I want to skip over Birmingham because uh, for a minute, if I may, I go to City because that's a home game as well. And that will be the return of Alex Greenwood. So I think, but and that's the one player I do think that's going to get booed out the building. Do you know what? I'm buzzing for that because that is my birthday weekend. And I saw it drop. All right, it is as well, yeah. <laughs> birthday weekend, Derby at home. Perfect. Couldn't ask for anything better. Um, so, yeah, I think with, with that, you're right. I think she will be. I think she'll probably not want to be, what's the word? I don't want to say not want to be turning up, but that, that'll be on her mind, definitely. What's my reception going to be like? And I, I do think that will be worse than LJ's. Um, and I know I briefly mentioned it uh, sort of a minute or two ago. But, yeah, I just I just think, you know, It'll be interesting, really, because with a vocal support that we do have, how much will that affect how she plays? So, in other words, mm -hmm. if she's constantly everything, a lot of noise, you know, how, how is that going to affect her? I mean, listen, she played in front of us a lot. Obviously, that was back in her. That was a different kind of support. So, she should be used to the noise. But I just think, listen, there'll be, there'll be more fans there this year. I think that we get 4K last time we were allowed in the ground. Um, and played them in the, uh, I think it was the FA Cup with that dodgy refereeing decision. So, yeah, that that for me is an interesting one. And again, it's quite early on, October, you know, fifth game in. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's it's one of them. They've let a few go. Um, you know, they've brought in, actually, who have they brought in? They've brought in someone, I'm sure they have. I can't think off the top of my head, but there's, <laughs> there's somebody come in anyway. Completely slipped my mind, but yeah. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. Listen, there's nothing better than a derby game, is there? And I think to face them pretty quickly after Chelsea, you know, let, let's have it. Let's see what we can do. Um, for me, they sort of they started very slow last year anyway. They were down in fifth and they were all questioning, was the gaffer the right person? And we were sort of bantering their fans because we were sat flying at the top and then it all, <laughs> it all went a little bit south. But listen, it was good while it lasted. But yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to see how they start again this year. I think now their manager's had a season. And I don't like bigging them up, but they should be better equipped. You know, they should be now used to what he brings and how to play. So, um, yeah, I tell you, it was now. It was um, Bunny Shaw. How can I forget that? Because Nat, oh, yeah, Bunny Shaw, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Bunny Shaw's come in. So, that'll be interesting to see how she does. Different league, different style of play, different team. But, um, yeah, you know, let, let's bring it and let's see what we get. I'm sure that their, their, their City fans are banters about Bunny Shaw knowing that uh, United um, fans wanted it so bad. Did, but, not everybody. <laughs> but but I, I do think that this is it, going to remind me of when Carlos Tevez came back to Old Trafford for the first time as a Man City player where mm. everything got booed. Every touch got yeah. booed. Every time the name got read out got booed. And I think this is what's going to be for Alex Greenwood. And whether she can handle that or not, I don't know. But I'm sure... Um, I'm sure we'll find out, but um, and, and I don't think it, no one's going to be overly nasty. It's just going to be a booing because you've, you've gone to City, you know, uh, and someone that's played for every single major club rival, it seems, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Liverpool, Everton, United City, and uh, whoever else she's played for, no doubt, that, you know, um, she always seems to fi find herself at one of the rival sides, doesn't she? So, yeah. But it's going to be tasty, that City game. As, as you said, though, um, and, and it's a Manchester derby and it, it makes it all the more that hopefully we get a bumper crowd and, and again I think Sky are going to put that game up um, it, they'll be foolish not to I, I think you know what going on what on other ex-players uh, but I'm going to rewind back to uh, one game to Birmingham City between the 1st and the 3rd of October whenever the TV deals obviously uh, uh, confirmed and announced Um and it could be potentially if it is Matt Skinner that's coming in, it's coming going to, going to come up against his uh, old club fairly quickly. It's the fourth game of the season in the league. Um, but Birmingham, we all know that players be jumping shit like no tomorrow. Um, mm. Surely these are one of the favourites to go down. Surely, I'm, or am I just being a bit too harsh? No, I think. Listen, we said that last year, and obviously well, the only we did to be fair. Yeah, what was Carl Award, but I think. New manager, come from the Scottish League. Done okay there, but I'm not going to hype back because it's the Scottish League. Um, like I said, players jumping ship. Not many retained. Um, I think they've got um, one signing from Sheffield. 
So, I mean, I don't know. Don't know enough about her to say whether it's good signing for them. But, uh, yeah, it's a big rebuilding job for them, isn't it? I think they've got some like five contracted players now. And the season starts in six weeks. So, yeah, I think it's kind of hit and hope for them. I think, the, obviously, Cowley did a fantastic job. And we've more than sort of been vocal with that last year. But this, this year now is really... I don't know the time for them to sort of deliver and kick on. Will they do it? I don't think so. I think the thing is for me, it's going to be between them and West Ham. You know, West Ham looking a little bit of a dire strait to me. You know, that new guy come in, didn't exactly pull up trees. Um, yes, they've made a couple of signings, but are they going to be good enough? I mean, I, I don't know. Um, but I think just based on the fact that five players and a new gaffer, and they're pretty much starting from scratch, I think, yeah, Birmingham for this season, again, have got to be favourites for uh, the chop absolutely and to, and to end on the fixtures thing is there any fixtures any other fixtures throughout the um, season that does catch your eye um, at all as I said it's pretty basic pretty generic every team as we touched upon have got to play each other twice yeah. but is there any other fixtures on there that we haven't mentioned that particularly catches your eye that you're looking um, forward to I think Ev Everton away yeah, we're not going to have it in a way, don't we? Let's Just, be fair. Yeah, we do. But I think as well, it's um, I believe it's the Women's Football Weekend over that weekend, which always makes interesting viewing because obviously they scatter the fixtures so there's no clashes. Um, you know, it'll probably be televised. They've made some OK sign. I mean, OK is probably a little bit harsh. You made some good signings, let's, let's, let's be honest, before I get shot again by Everton fans. <laughs> You know, yeah, some, some some good signings and fair fair play to them. You know, I think the only thing that still makes me chuckle is they still think they're going to get in the Champions League. But listen, we've we've got to banter them with something. But yeah, I think you know, will be more difficult game than we predict. Probably closer than recent years. But that that for me, yeah, good one there. Um, other than that, I don't think you know. Obviously, February looks um, interesting. Two big away games: Arsenal and Man City. I mean, you know, you talked about Chelsea away last game and that could pain us because we could be literally watching them lift the league. But I think fe February, bloody hell, it doesn't get more brutal than that, does it? Arsenal away one week and then the following weekend, Man City. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping actually, because I've read that Arsenal are trying to play a game at the Emirates. I'm hoping that if that's at the Emirates, you know, I've never been there. So that'll be, <laughs> so to speak, another ground to tick off. But um, yeah, and then apart from that, December looks quite kind, Brighton and Villa. Um, January looks quite kind West Ham, Birmingham, Spurs and then April looks quite kind so it's sort of like little phases isn't it it's not really a balance of like you know easy hard easy hard easy hard it's more cluster of difficult ones cluster of easier ones cluster of difficult ones cluster of easier ones and so on but yeah I mean you know in, in overall like I said earlier you know we've got to play everybody so I, I'm I'm not you know I'm not going to sit here and like oh shit I'm massively worried about February and I'm bricking myself for this and I'm buzzing for that you know for me it's just let, let's get in the flaming grounds and let's just get behind everyone you know rather than crying over things that are beyond our control now. Uh, I just mentioned, I just want to, you said about grounds there. And I'm glad, glad I mentioned we, we did a show ages and ages ago about a COVID pass to get to football grounds. Oh, now, it me. does seem <laughs> that this could happen, but the good the good point of view is I don't think it'll affect the women's game at all because it, no. it seems to be any crowd over 20,000 that, yep. that it's going to be provided for, which Old Trafford, so should Manchester United women play at Old Trafford, then it will be a bit of a problem yeah. uh, for, uh, for people um, that that may be against the COVID pass or wh whatever. Um, uh, uh, on that, I'm just glad that it's not going to mess around with the women's game too much because you, can you imagine the outcry if they went, oh, uh, uh, football across all levels need, need this COVID pass. But then again, let, let's be fair, though. It wouldn't surprise you if that did come in. Um, are you praying and hoping that something like that doesn't come in? Because um, it's just for, for me, it's a bit of a faff, man. You know, all right, my second jab's on the 2nd of August. Um, I'll be double jabbed by then. Um, I bought my forward from the 23rd to the 2nd. Um, so know that Leeds is on the 14th. Thank fuck the NHS texting me that I could bring it forward. Um uh, mm. Uh, so, um, I mean, it doesn't really affect you too much, I suppose, Matt, because of the women's game. I, don't, I, I get no no crowd unless they were playing the big stadiums, like you say, 
at the Emirates, maybe. Uh, yeah. Do you fear if we do play in the big stadiums like the Emirates, that like Old Trafford, uh, perhaps Stamford Bridge, um, maybe even where Leicester are going, all right, the crowds are not going to be at 20,000. You should imagine not anyway. But if they did, if we played Man City at the Etihad again and we get over 30,000 again, do, do, do you fear for people that aren't double jabbed and um, will people mess, is it going to mess everything around? I mean, I'm not going to a huge thing on this because I've said a lot on this um, sort of on the podcast and tweeted. But I think something I read yesterday was that, you know, his own party, there was more than half of Boris Johnson's party that opposed it. So, you know, and I said this to Rob, um, you know, when sort of we had a chat over it because he was talking about it. Because, listen, the pair of us know people that for whatever reason, well, for medical reasons, shall we say, not whatever reason, but for medical reasons, can't have jabs, which is, that's fine. Now, we, we I said to him, I said, I'd be very surprised if it, you know, got passed. Um, and I did read yesterday, like I said, it was a lot of people opposed it, his own party, more than half. So if it goes to vote, I'd be very surprised. And the thing is, it, it's open to manipulation because the saying about you need two jabs or you need a letter saying you've had two jabs. Now, I'm not... I've got to be careful what I say. I'm not advocating that people sort of, you know, abuse it. But listen, a letter, and I, I'm, I'm sure I don't have to explain myself here, that's open to abuse straight away um, and manipulation. And I think not only will it alienate people, it's going to be a faff, isn't it? Can you imagine queuing up? Right, can I see this? Right, can you show me your ID to prove that that's your name on that card? And just, just no. It's a big no-no for me. And like I say, I'm not going to go on a huge sort of thing into it. But... Not only is it a faff, it's just it's, it's it's unfair on people that can't have it. And you know, for example, I know somebody that's been told by a specialist that they can't have jabs um, due to it's an artery problem that somebody I know has, and where their artery is blocked, and they can't they can't basically be guaranteed that if they have it, you know, that something will happen because if that artery clots, they're going to be dead. So they've been advised, which is fine, um, but then it's like. You know, they could easily get a letter confirming that from the specialist. But would that be acceptable in grounds? Nobody's thought about this. Nobody's thought, well, actually, what about them people that can't actually have it? Not those that are turning it down, those that medically cannot have it, but would have it if they could. And they've not thought about that. They've just thought, I know, let's just do this and throw it away. Now, for me, I went down to Wimbledon and there was 22,000 people every day. Um, for the final week, it was full capacity, which is 45,000 people attending. Now, the way it worked was that you were only allowed to go on one day. So potentially that was new people every day going. Now, I got um, an email from them the other day, sort of like a generic one, thanking me for coming. And the because it was like a test event, the results from that were not one positive case. So, I mean, listen, I'm not going to do quick maths now, but 22K a day, you know, times by seven, let's call it, you know, 140,000 plus the second week. So let, let's call the total number. 300,000 different people went just whilst we, I use this to sort of analyse. So 300,000 people went. And the way that worked was you either showed your card thing to say you've been double dosed or you did um, a lateral flow the day before. And then you got the text from the NHS and you showed that on your phone. Not a problem. Not one test came back or not one person caught COVID there. So it shows that for me, actually, surely rather than use this passport if we did the take a test or show your card much more simple way i know gary neville's been very vocal on this i think of all the other test events you know there's been test events in liverpool for clubs and they did the same you either show your card or take a lateral flow um i think back to the fa cup tester last year and i think there was five out of like eighty thousand people tested positive again you're talking very very low numbers so i think for me this has got to be a simpler way uh, you know i'm sure people would rather take a test that can't have it you know and constantly test to get in than to be excluded i think that's massively unfair especially when it's not their fault so for me i don't want to see it regardless of my own personal circumstances i'm just thinking of the wider picture here you know it's not about me it's not about you it's not about all our mates it's about the bigger picture and whether it's men's or women's you know i'm, I'm not you know i'm not going to sit here and say one or the other it's as a general it's sports in general it's music venues it's clubs it's bars it's pubs people have lost enough money 
you know, and people have had a bad enough 18 months as it is, and now you're denying them or trying to deny them a chance to go and enjoy themselves. You know, people have a stressful week at work, and by going watching the team and having a bit of a social at the weekend or going to a music concert, you know, they don't want to be denied that. It's just ridiculous. So, you know, they, they need to give the heads a wobble, but I'm hoping this, you know, is massively opposed for the, the sake of everybody, really, because it's just, you know, they're saying, oh, we're not going to use it in pubs. It's like, well, why the hell are we using it ever? You know what I mean? It's not consistent with what they're saying. And then saying, oh, well, no, over 20,000 people. So you're telling me if it's under 20,000 that you can't catch anything, you know, the risk is still there. You can still catch it and pass it on if you double jabbed. So to me, you know, let's just say double jabbed or a test and you can get in. Or let's forget the whole idea and just go back to how it was. And then if people don't want to attend, that's their own choice, you know, their own free will. Not a problem. But I think to exclude people for no fault of their own is... Just yeah, ridiculous to so to speak. But that that's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna leave it there, pal. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna do it like um you know, I, I think I can understand indoor arenas like clubs and everything. Yeah. Uh, for the first six months or something, I could understand that. Yeah. No problem, uh, because it's an indoor setting. But in outdoor stadiums, I, I don't understand it at all. No, I, and don't I don't know, as you said, Gary Neville's a post it, but I know the Premier League uh want to start it in August. They want to start it from day dot. Um, they're like, we want to jump ahead of this. We think this is the right way to go f- to uh, protect fans and keep everybody safe and everything. Um, and also, I do know that if people can't have the jab, uh, that there's um, so some way of proving it. I can't remember what it was. Some way that you can prove it and you, you're all right. You can go into the grounds and everything. But what are you um, going to do about those that are under 18 then? Because at 16, to 16, 17, it's been rife in terms of cases. Yeah. Well, that's so what I, under eight, So it's a bit unfair because you can't well, have... Yeah, but, the, but the, that, that's the whole right. argument, isn't it? Is what's, what's happening with the younger generation, well, the younger crowds, like, you know. generation of fans, yeah. you know. How, uh, how unfair is that? But I know the EFL are looking into it as well. So the EFL are looking into it. What's the bet in the FA are going to look into this sort of thing as well? Yeah. Uh, you don't know how far down the pyramid it's going to go. This uh, I just think they treat thing. football fans like idiots. You know, like you say, it's out. So what, what is it? Uh, I'm sorry, but Gareth went to Silverstone, 140,000 fans or whatever it was there. Yep. Uh, uh, and as, as people are saying now that barely anybody got asked for any exactly. proof of vaccinations or lateral flow tests or anything like that, you know. It baffles me thing. Oh, I don't know, mate. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I'm going to move it on then. We're, you know... Uh, before time runs out, as always, the time is skipping on. Um, as we record this on on a Friday um, to go out on a Saturday, it's just been announced before we went to record that Hannah Blundell, Blundell uh, is um, joining from Chelsea. She's 27 years old, defender. She's joining from Chelsea. Um, nothing to do with the Lauren James deal before anybody asks, is it part of a Lauren James deal? It's, but as far as I know, it's nothing to do with Lauren, anything part exchange with Lauren James or anything like that. I think for Lauren James, you're not asking for the money up, up front, um, which is the right way to do it. But Hannah Blundell, mate, a- anybody that will know something about it, you're the man. So uh, what do you re- what do you think to that signing, pal? Yeah, happy with that. I think we we do need a full back. Um, obviously, Owner played in the wrong position last year. So I think her back at right back, Hannah Blundell at left back, she is left footed and was short on them. And I think she will link up with Leah very, very well. Um, yeah, she spent just short of 10 years at Chelsea. Um, you know, was there through her youth career. Um, only just turned 27. Um, you know, she's played Champions League, she's played at the highest level, she's won trophies. Um, yeah, I think she's won some at like four, I think, league titles there. Um, FA Cup as well, you know, um, Conti Cup. So, yeah, you know, happy with that two year deal with the option of a further year. Um, she was briefly back in 2018, cap for England. I think she got two or three caps. Um, well, listen, you know, a solid enough signing. I think, like I say, we, we need or needed a more solid option. Obviously, 
last year, Kirsty Smith and Martha were very unfortunate with injuries, but neither of them are left backs. So I think, you know, it's rumoured that one of them two, either Smithy or Martha, may move on once the new manager comes in. Both are out of contract. Um, so who knows? But I think, listen, now, you know, we've got obviously Millie Turner at centre half, Ethan Mannion rumoured or done, should I say, but not announced. Um, owner right back, Hannah Blundell left back. And I think, you know, that that's not a bad back four. I would like to see, obviously, we've got Thor as well. I would like to see another centre half come in. I'm still jumping on the Alana Kennedy bandwagon. That's gone quiet. Don't know what's happening with her. Nobody seems to know where she's going. But I'd like to think, you know, Skinner would fancy her. You know, she'd be sort of his type of tall, physical player, good from set play, offer something different to Millie. So listen, you know, in terms of strength in the back line, that that's a decent enough sign. And, you know, she's got, like I say, that experience. She's played in this league, so settling in won't be an issue. Um but yeah, you know, again, um I I'd sort of a different to you. I I I was led to believe it was part of the LJ deal, but... I yeah, well, to be fair, mate, I might have got that wrong because just looking at um, a message that John John's put out on the men's group chat on WhatsApp, they, it is something to do with the Lauren James deal, unofficially I, yeah. put, but uh, I thought it wasn't because it didn't so I think what United it, what say it, anything about yeah, that, but obviously they wouldn't, what, would they? Well, what I'd heard and what they might have done was obviously we, we, we were haggling over theme. We went back and asked for more money. Mm. And we asked for a player and they said no. And I think what we've done is we've probably agreed to go, because obviously there was rumoured 200k. I think what's happened is we've probably gone from that to like, right, well, we'll what about this player and we'll accept less? And I think that for me, because like I said, I'd heard it was part of the deal. So I think for me, it sounds like 50k plus Hannah Blundell, because she was still under contract there. So it's not like, you know, and we, we've not paid anything. They've not said we've we've paid an undisclosed fee or whatever. Um, so I think, yeah, for, for me, I would pretty much say that that was part of the deal. Um, obviously, they've not tweeted and confirmed that, and obviously LJ's not confirmed, but listen, you know what negotiations are like? And we're not Absolutely. a party to them, but for, for me, from what I'd heard and been told, it was Lauren James um, for cash plus player, um, and then obviously there's the add-ons as well. So I think, listen, we've, we've got ourselves an experienced player, a good player, one that's needed. The back line wasn't great last year. Um, Hannah's an upgrade on Smithy and Martha, which is always what we want. Competition for places. And it now looks, you know, like I say, a, a decent sign in the right age. You know, not an old player, not really, really young, but just right in the middle. Um, so, yeah, you know, you'll probably get some people moaning, no doubt. I've read one or two things already, like I say, and it's just, you know, within five minutes of it being announced. But... Yeah, f for me, no complaints. You know, I don't, I don't know who people are expecting us to pull out the bag. It's the same with the manager. When I said to people, "Well, who do you want that's better than Skinner that will come?" and that people had turned it down and they, they can't answer it. So, you know, it's it's like this. You know, give me a left back that's got so much experience. You know, nearly a hundred appearances for Chelsea. That's won title. That's played Champions League. That's got caps for a country. You know that you're going to get as part of a sort of a, a free, well, not a free transfer, but as part of a deal, you know what I mean? And I bet, bet people couldn't name somebody within reason. You know, it's all well and good chucking out these quality names and these, you know, high-flying star players. But at the end of the day, we're short on money. We're struggling in terms of ownership and facilities. and They're, they're not going to come. So for, for me, that's, you know, as, as good as it can get. So chuff with that one. Um, I'm sure... You know, when, when you see a player and others that may not know too much about it, you know, you'd be, be more than chuffed. But any thoughts from you? Obviously, I mentioned, you know, left-footed, linking up with Leah. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, listen, I think it's, a, you know, I think that's probably a really decent replacement for, eventually, for Alex Greenwood. I think we've not really had a proper left-back replacement, yeah. have we? We've yeah. had a couple come in, not worked out, you know, um, Lot of this was one of them, you know, you know, but you know, it just didn't work out, unfortunately. But hopefully, Hannah Blundell, she spent all her career uh, as far as I, I've seen at Chelsea, yeah. she grew, grew up there, and um, you know, WSL experience has played for England, has been capped for England, and that. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that. She's going to be as good as Alex Greenwood was for Manchester United. Um, I'm not going to say she's going to be, uh, you know, she's not going to be as worse. She's not going to be better. She'll, we'll have to wait and see, isn't it? You know, we'll have to see how she takes to being a Manchester United player because 
fair enough, she's come from a Chelsea squad. She's used to winning titles and used to playing Champions League football and what have you. Uh, but the pressure, as I've always said, um, playing for Manchester United is far greater, far, far greater. You know, so hopefully she, she can adapt to that and she, she settles in quickly. And uh, it's about time we signed a proper left back, mate. I'm really chuffing out. And it's going to help out Leah completely. Mm. Uh, you know, and thank thank God. Thank God, really. Uh, and then that back, that back line looks a lot stronger now. But I do agree with you. I think another centre-half has to come in. Yeah. Um, we look weaker there. You know, we're, we're, injured, we're injured away at centre-half from absolute crisis, aren't we? You know. Well, I think Ethan Mannion struggle with injuries as well. That that still worries exactly. me. Exactly. Well, that's with Ethan Mannion coming in as well. I, I still think we need yet another centre half. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, as I'm, I'm not sold on uh, Maria Thor, Stottier Thor at the minute. You know, uh, I think she's been couple of very sloppy defending for what I've seen of her. But hopefully, second season, well, won't be second season quite because obviously she's joined. In January, but yeah. uh, first hopefully, season with the first pre-season. full proper season with a pre season behind her, get used to her teammates and everything. We'll see her a lot better with Maria. I, hope, I really hope we do. Um, because I want to see her do well, obviously, I want to see her do well, but I'm just not being convinced thus far. And I said that about Jackie Gronin in her first season, I was not convinced, but second season, Jackie Gronin, wow, you know, that's that's the player that we signed. You know, that, uh, I, just, I just look forward to it, mate. It's, it's, it's good, you know. Um, hopefully, get a couple more announced uh, as well as getting an official announcement on the manager as well. And then um, pre season all of a sudden looking a little bit more rosier than it was a couple of weeks back. Would be even better if we could get some games that they'd actually let us into, though, instead of this behind closed doors crap. But yeah. No, I agree with that, mate. I agree with that. I'm still jumping on the Scotland hype. I've been saying Scotland since like February, March, you know, when they were saying all Malta's not going to happen. I was like, let's get up to Scotland. We'll play Rangers. We'll play Celtic. We'll play Glasgow. It was a good night out up there as well. So like, I'd love to play it. Glasgow, you know. Glasgow, well, we played them year, didn't we? At the start, yeah. mullered them. But, you know, Rangers are full time and have improved. Celtic are okay. Um, so yeah, let, let's let's go on a preseason tour of Scotland, lad. They should let oh, fans no. organise it. None of this rubbish about. Oh like, no, man! No, it's it's should be, shouldn't it? League. None of we this. We a good trip to Scotland, don't we? Oh, obviously. Well, the last trip was good. It was, mate. It was. Who knows? Anyway, uh, one final point I will before uh, I will get on to before we wrap the, uh, wrap this up is football manager or to us old school people championship manager I've always been known as champ manager football manager <laughs> crying out loud anyway uh, football manager have announced that, that uh, over the next coming two couple of years possibly not this game but the next game for next season that they will have women's football uh, integrated into it and that's on top of FIFA announced that Alex um, Alex Scott I almost forgot her name uh, that she's going to be uh, uh, on the commentary uh, on the commentary team on the new FIFA game FIFA 22, replacing Alan McNally as the pitch side sort of reporter. Um, so she? everyone's looking rosy the computer game side. My only my only disappointment with FIFA is we've got the international women's sides. Why well, can't we get the club women's sides as well? Yeah. Even if it's even if it's a DLC uh, downloadable content um, add-on or whatever it is. Uh, uh, I'm not really good at computer games, but you know what I mean? Add on so you can add, add them on digitally or whatever. Um, what were your thoughts on that, mate? Yeah, it was a good move. Listen, I, I've been saying ever since they put the women's international teams on FIFA, you know, where's the club sides? And that that was probably two, three years ago now since that happened. So, yeah, listen, it's a step in the right direction, isn't it? You know, OK, it's on football slash championship manager. And they did say it's going to take a while to do which is good in a way because it means they're going at it properly. You know, obviously, football manager, they probably, you know, with the licences and that, it might prove difficult. But listen, as long as they research all the teams and they get the leagues and sort that, I think that's, you know, it's a very good start and hopefully it can be branched out to FIFA. But certainly, you know, promising in the fact that they're now finally considering it. And, you know, they did talk about, you know, I think they've sponsored Leicester City as well, women, um, their dugout and couple of advertising boards and I think you've got something to do with the men as well so it's good that they're oh and Watford women so it's good that they're branching out you know that they're putting not only money 
into clubs, but also, you know, sponsoring them, but the sort of helping grow the game as well. And, you know, this is what it needs with Sky, and there's so many people must play that game. Um, and this is why it's important that it goes into FIFA as well. You know, it's it's good for publicity. It's good for the league. It's good for the players. Um, and like I say, yeah, you know, step in the right direction. You know, I think they had Emma Hayes on Five Live talking about it as well. Again, great promotion. You know, one of the probably, if not the best manager um, in England. So, yeah, chuffed with that, I think. You know, if I mean, listen, I, I've not got time to sit around and play computer games and PlayStation games and everything else, but... You know, I do play a bit of FIFA now and then, so I'm hoping it can come on there. And, uh, yeah, it'd be good that one. It'd take charge United women and get your signings in you want. The only thing I think will be interesting was how, how they're going to do the transfers, because obviously the women's game transfers, you've not got the millions. So they're going to have to think about that. But listen, you know, what what a great uh, what a great time to start it. New Sky deal. Game is ever growing. So, yes, it's about time for me. The good thing about football manager or, the, or championship manager, as I always like to call it, is that they're detailed. They're, they go into every detail, every nook and cranny. And it's no secret that even football managers in the men's game have took signings of championship manager in real life or football manager in real life because the, the detail and accuracy that everything goes into. And no wonder why there's, they've said it'll take a couple of years but we want to get everything right. And that's a good thing. That's why it's such a popular game, Football Manager, um, because of the accurate detail in, in, in everything, in every aspect of the of that game, whether it be players, whether it be stadiums, whether it be kits and you, you everything, everything down to the minutest little detail mm. Football Manager goes through. And FIFA, I think FIFA, it's about time that they, that they bring in the club, women club teams, you know. Uh, it's only fair, you know. Um, just get it done. Just get it done, FIFA. Even if it's the downloadable content, you know, um, that you can add on to the game, uh, fair enough, you know. I mean, to uh, be fair, you could work on that between now and January. And when you update your January signings, you can get the women's game because the January signings is downloadable, isn't it? So Yeah, exactly, mate. Get a gap. Well, that's that's what it is. The modern day FIFA game is every day, every day it, it updates itself, you know, especially when the season's on. Dates the results, dates players' injuries, and everything. So, yeah. why not? Anyway, we'll leave it there then, pal. It's uh, it's been a good show again, mate. It's been a good show. Um, of course, this is a, a pre record, so we pre recorded it on the Friday, it's going out on a Saturday. So, um, we do apologize, but we've got a busy weekend. Uh, Matt's off out celebrating, um, with the, with the all four United WFC lot. Uh, hopefully, I could be there. Uh, after the uh, QPR game, uh, Queen's Park Rangers game, I'm coming back from the men's pre-season friendly. Um, I'm going to meet them all out in town. Uh, but I'm, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm, all I'm, I'm going to be missing is the meal, but I don't like curry and I can't handle hot food. So, <laughs> look, it's a bit lucky, to be fair. Though. I've been the odd one out with a plate full of chips. Um, but, Matt, um, and then I'm go, going forward, pal, uh, on the Sunday... Uh, I believe we're going to go watch uh, FC United and Manchester as well. If anybody yeah. wants to join us, is it a Broadhurst Park, pal? It is, yeah. It's becoming a habit now. But listen, a good habit. You know, we've always talked about sort of growing the channel and the game and helping other clubs. And, um, you know, we've got a good relationship now going with sort of the manager down there, Tom Fitton. Um, so, yeah, listen, you know, they, they play um, Brighouse, League Above. So they're in the third tier, Brighouse, FC are in the fourth tier. Um, myself and Gareth were down there on um, Wednesday watching play Burnley. Burnley are a full-time outfit. Again, a league ahead. Um, Burnley won 2-0, but, you know, FC more than give them a good game. And I think it's looking good down there. But, yeah, Broadhurst Park, Sunday, 3 o'clock. Um, it's on the Astro. It's free to go down and watch. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's good because there's quite a few, you know, United Development players there and, couple that have sort of been released you know and they're really building something good to play a similar brand of football um so yeah it's just just nice to get out and i know you know um speaking to sort of even players as well they're massively grateful you know i think we did a few videos and they got really good interactions and views and you know everyone was happy down there so it's just nice because it's local for us i think it's about 25 minutes for me um so it's not far um something to do you know a pre-season game to get to um hoping to do other clubs as well but that depends on whether the sort of you know, letting fans in or whether they're going to do a closed doors. But, yeah, at the minute, like I say, I'll be there at FC tomorrow. Um, then, obviously, Monday, there's Monday show, Tuesday show, Natalie's new show on Wednesday. 
John Show Thursday, Friday fans forum, and we're back again next Saturday. So a full week ahead. Um, and yeah, just building on really what we've sort of done throughout, well, since last September. Now it's coming up to 12 months slowly. Um, I'm looking to, you know, boost not only the women's game, but grow the fan base from Man United women as well. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to end it there, Matt. I'm going to wrap up there. Uh, thank you for everybody that's watched this. I know it's not live. I know we've not been able to get to your comments, but uh, we, as Matt said, we'll be back live next Saturday. So we'll, we'll save all your comments from then, and I'm sure we'll go over a couple of topics if we need to uh, for a quick five-minute chat, you know, for people that want to get their comments in from this show. Uh, if not, leave them in the comments section down below uh, on the old YouTube and uh, I, I will do my best to get back to you uh, via the old YouTube comment section uh, down, down below on this video. Um, thank you once again to Matt, as always, top, top show, pal. And we shall see you again next week. Cheers. See you later.